Today we are going to talk about quinceañeras. La fiesta de 15 años is a party celebrating a girl's 15th birthday. We use quinceañera interchangeably here to refer to the party itself and the girl celebrating the party. The 15th birthday is significant in Mexico and parts of Latin America as it marks the transition from childhood to young adulthood. It's similar to other coming of age celebrations such as sweet 16s and bat mitzvahs. If you're unfamiliar with the world of quinceañeras and don't want to look toda naca at your first quince, join us as we explore all the quinceañera traditions, including chambelanes, el vals, comida, and of course, el regalo sorpresa. Like most mestizo traditions, la fiesta de quince años can trace its origins to pre-Hispanic cultures. Both the Aztecs and Mayans performed puberty rites to indicate entry into adult life and the girl's acceptance of women's responsibilities. In the Aztec or Mexica culture, when girls reached the age of 15, they left the family to the Telpochcali or school to learn about the history and traditions of their culture. There, they learn to weave, cook, and take care of other domestic tasks, preparing her to become a suitable wife and a total real housewife of Tenochtitlan. Once a young woman was ready, she would be married off to the right suitor. And in the case of royalty, she would also be expected to perpetuate the royal lineage. Well, in case of royalty, they were actually expected to get knocked up even more so than the common ladies. With the arrival of the Spanish, came its bestie, of course, the Catholic Church. Adding a misa to la fiesta de quince años, or a Catholic mass, is still part of Catholic quinceañeras today. Over time, the celebration of quinceañeras became a central part of criollo family festivities. Unlike the U.S., in Latin America, a criollo refers to children or grandchildren of Spanish descent who were born in the colonies. The English and French word creole most likely comes from criollo. Other non-criollo families adopted this celebration, but wealthy families would be able to flex the most and have large galas with colossal banquets to present their daughters to society at the age of 15. In the 1800s, during a short-lived Mexican reign of European Emperor Maximiliano and his wife Carlota, Glamorous waltzes and elegant dresses were added to the tradition. For well-off families, announcing their daughters' quinceañeras in the press was significant, as this showed that they had money to throw such a party. Most importantly, the announcement let people know that a member of their family was being introduced into the world of society, similar to a debutante ball or cotillion. These ads were characterized by the quinceañera's name, her birthday date, la fiesta's details, parents' names, their titles, and sometimes even their profession. So it became a stratified celebration where the main purpose was to get a man with class, a good family, and obviously money. In short, the best bidder for the young lady presented to society. The mestizaje of the two cultures indigenous and Spanish, give us fiestas de quince años as we know them today. The celebration typically begins with a mariachi serenade at the quinceañera's home. Those are always so fun. If the quinceañera is Catholic, the festivities continue with a Thanksgiving mass in which la Virgen is also venerated. Aside from being a significant symbol for Mexicans, la Virgen de Guadalupe is also, of course, Maria who at the age of 15 was told she would be mother of Jesus. La quinceañera goes to mass in a formal dress, generally eye-catching, usually elegant and formal, and always in the color and style of her choice. The traditional color of the quinceañera dress was pink, but today, of course, any color can be worn. 
The church can be adorned with flowers and a red carpet with the family, the court of honor, and close friends of the quinceañera in attendance. After the Misa's Evangelio, El Padrecito blesses traditional objects brought by La Quinceañera, typically a Bible and a rosary, as these symbolize the eternal Word of God and our faith in Him, respectively. Additionally, she can also be given a religious pendant necklace by her godparents. Quinceañeras can also wear a tiara, which is a symbol of her reign as daughter of God. It also serves as a reminder to her loved ones in the world that she is, in fact, a princess. At the end of the Misa, La Quinceañera typically leaves her bouquet of flowers in el altar for La Virgen. This serves as a token of La Quinceañera's faith and a promise to continue cultivating her faith for the rest of her life. After the religious ceremony, the festivities continue with dances and music. Some of the dances take months of practice and usually begin with la presentación with los chambelanes. Traditionally, la quinceañera's court is made up of 15 chambelanes, one of them as the chambelan de honor and 14 damas. Although more popular today are seven chambelanes and seven damas, bringing the total to 15, including the quinceañera. But of course, the quinceañera can have as many or as few chambelanes and damas as she wants, even opting for only chambelanes or only damas in her court, or sometimes none at all. I like to be the center of attention. Party officially begins with an entrance dance. This is one of the most anticipated moments by the guests, since the quinceañera gives life to the party with her choreographed dance routine. Here, a baile sorpresa can be included if desired. The vals is the culminating point of the celebration in which the chambelanes and damas perform the choreographed dance they've rehearsed for months. These are supposed to mimic the dances of the early 19th century performed at imperial courts. But today, waltz is a genre rarely used. This is followed by the father-daughter vals and ends with La Quinceañera dancing with close male family members. Here, the classic Tiempo de Vals by Chayanne is usually played. While many different traditions and events can be incorporated into the reception, it is truly up to each individual quinceañera to decide what she wants to do. So, if you're still planning your quince, I am your friendly reminder that this is your night, so do you, honey. Another popular tradition is El Ultimo Juguete, which is based on a Mayan tradition where a last toy would be given to a girl before she became a young lady. El Cambio de Zapatillas, or the changing of the shoes, is also popular and symbolizes another step toward maturity. No pun intended. Usually, La Quinceañera's father, or another designated person, changes her flats for heels. And, as previously mentioned, a quinceañera can be crowned with a tiara or an actual crown during her coronation. A fun way La Festejada can show her gratitude and love is with a candlelight or rose ceremony. <laughs> Let me explain. In this ceremony, La Quinceañera chooses 15 people who have supported her throughout her life, and then she gives a lit candle or rose to each person, kinda like The Bachelor, but hopefully not as dramatic. A toast is made by La Quinceañera's parents as part of El Brindis. If there are padrinos de brindis, they too can make a toast. As dinner is provided to the guests, the guests provide the gifts. My favorite part. These gifts are usually left next to the tiered cake. The cake is usually cut towards the end of the night. After all the eating and dancing and partying, you kind of just want to take it home. Today, the celebration of Los Quince Años 
has had several social modifications as young women don't necessarily get married immediately after their quinceañeras. And the quinceañera is just a celebration instead of a way of marrying her off. These days, you could choose the elements you want or don't want at your quinceañera, such as the number of people you want as chambelanes and damas or the traditions you want to pass on. The Thanksgiving Mass, however, continues to be an important part of the celebration. Traditions at the party itself, like el vals and el brindis, echo what has been done from generation to generation of quinceañeras. Today, after all the traditions and ceremonies are complete, the DJ goes on to play reggaeton, salsa, cumbia, and so much more, until hopefully the end of the night. Two more recent additions to quinceañeras are candy tables with sweets, alfajores, bombones, chocolates, cakes, ice cream, oh, and the photo booth. We can't forget about photos with family and friends for the gram. Today in the age of social media, let's face it, we're not that far off from the days of Mexican Bridgerton when quinceañeras are done as more of a flex for friends and family. In the end though, the best thing about quinceañeras are the memories you create with family and friends. My favorite memory of my quinceañera was definitely rehearsals and the dancing with my family. I love the dancing. Let us know in the comments what your favorite traditions of las quinceañeras are and hit the like and subscribe button if you like this video as much as you like your favorite shade of pink. Bye!